Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day God has prepared for us once again. And look, it is raining in York. What a nice surprise for us, although a little squishy out there. We've had kind of dryness, and so we're finally getting some rain. Makes it a little difficult to get out and run through the raindrops today, but you know what? We'll take it. We'll take it. It's making everything nice and green out there for us. So it is great to gather with you all in worship here this morning, and we welcome our folks who are joining us via Zoom today, and I would bet there might be a few more than usual. So welcome, everyone. We're glad that you are here, however, what, which way you decided to come. Our candle will be lit in just a moment as a reminder of Christ's presence here with us this morning. We remember that Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with you. And today we do come together here in our beautiful sanctuary in person, as well as through video and phone from all corners of our area into one body of Christ. And whenever we do come together, we always hope that this is a time and a place to rest and to encounter God within our midst. A couple of announcements um, this morning. I see Glenn is back there all in green. So let's start with Mr. Glenn. You want to come on up here and tell us what the green is for today? I know we started this uh, a couple weeks ago. So what's our green? Remind us, please. Well, this is the continuation of, of course, this week was Creation Week, mm -hmm. Creation Care Week. And we're just, I'm just kind of reminding people to continue to remain green. We started with Go Green last weekend. And then we go through like Arbor Day this week. We, I actually did some planting of trees yesterday. It was very interesting. Nice. So, you know, be aware of what's out there, what's available to us to do. Um, there's lots of work to be done. And I do appreciate the work you've done in terms of collecting plastics this week. We have a trail route here that we put mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of things on. And so we're going to uh, finish that today. But I'm handing out more green bags for you if you want. You can take them to Ebert's Lane which is where this new plant is located, where they're recycling all of the plastics, all plastics, that's kind of the neat thing about it, any type of plastic, one through seven, I think it's called. Okay. So please continue to do so. It's important that we continue to, to save our earth and be green every day. Excellent. That's it. All right. So, so I do have more if you need green bags. Thank you. All right, so our green venture continues with our creation care, collecting plastics, planting things, and other efforts of greenness around our area. So thank you for that, Glenn. Other announcements folks might want to lift up. All right, I've got a couple, and then we'll come back. So if you have something, we'll get to that. Uh, our Care Partners Connections training for individuals that are caregivers or family members of individuals living with dementia, Alzheimer's started this past Tuesday, and we have five more sessions coming up, including one this coming Tuesday. If you are looking for some tools, techniques, more understanding of what it means to live with an individual who has dementia or Alzheimer's, this is wonderful information and sessions to participate in. I sat in on Tuesday, and it was a lot of really good information and I know there is more to come. So it is at 2 o'clock this coming Tuesday. And you can sign up. Let us know that you are planning to come. Just contact Dawn in the church office. So that we have a little bit of a heads up and can be prepared to welcome you there. So give her a call or a text message. Um, we would appreciate that. Also next Saturday, May 6th at 9 o'clock, we are planning to do... Church cleanup day. Some of the cleanup has already started. Uh, yesterday, I swung by the church office a little late in the day, and I saw um, John Kunkel out with a power washer. He was cleaning off the front of our church and cleaned off over by uh, the office side of the glass door area where some ducks had left us some uh, welcome additions by our entrance area and so I was glad to see that was removed today so we're getting cleaned up in all sorts of areas so next Saturday we might do some weeding we might not depends on how the weather is and 
if our folks that are coming to lay down some mulch for us got here ahead of us or not. Uh, so we also have other things. Our community garden is starting to get ready for planting, and we have stuff indoors that we're certainly starting to clean up our classrooms and the stage area as well as other areas in our space. So we've got a lot of stuff that we can do. We're going to start at 9 o'clock, and yes, our Weight Watchers folks will be here on this side of the church, so we're going to try and avoid this area for a little while while they have their meeting, and we'll work on that side of the church. So we will be meeting together. So if you want to come out, we need plenty of people, because remember, many hands make light and quick work, so we're planning on gathering at 9. Bring your gloves, bring your good attitude, bring some coffee if that's what you need to get moving. We'll meet together, maybe have some, even have some munchies. We'll get the coffee pots going as well. So come out and join us for that. And speaking of Weight Watchers, they had their first meetings this week and everything went really well. They were very excited to be here and grateful that we all opened our doors to welcome them in. So thank you for helping us do that and making this space available for them to use. They were grateful for that. So as a reminder, they are meeting in our gathering area Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturday mornings. Uh, they are using this parking lot, and when they overflow this lot, then they migrate over to this one and fill parts of that. Um, we are cognizant of our preschool being here Wednesdays and Friday mornings as well, and they know that. And they are cognizant of the drop-off line, so we're working around that, and everybody's getting acquainted with the routine, so we are adjusting and tweaking as we go. But so far, so good, and things are going well. So we're getting there. It's been a new experience. All righty. I wanted to let you all know, if you have received your copy of the Halo, you would have seen that it has been 20 years since our beautiful sanctuary space was built and we moved in. And on June 4th, we are going to have a celebration and rededication of this wonderful space. So please mark your calendars for June 4th to be here to celebrate with us as we rededicate this space. Pastor Phyllis is planning to be back with us as we do that. And we also will, after worship, we'll be gathering for our annual kickoff this summer barbecue, strawberry fest, just fun time, get together and eat lots of stuff. So plan on being here for that event. We're looking forward to it. Other announcements that folks have out there? Nothing? All right. Wanted to let you all know my name was picked out of the lottery for jury duty for this week. Yes, I know, right? So tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, I will be down at the courthouse um, to find out what that's all about. And I have no clue what's going to happen after that. And I will let you all know whether I am one of the lucky ones chosen for jury duty to actually participate in a case or whether I'm going to be sent home, i.e. back here to work or uh, what. So I'll keep you posted. But if I am selected to cover a case, then I do have backup for emergency call coverage. And if needed, Barb and Joanne will help field calls and get you to Pastor Laura or Pastor Rick if needed. But we'll communicate via email and let you know what's going on once I find out tomorrow. So stay tuned. I know I was just on vacation and now I've got jury duty. Bad timing. But I didn't get to choose it. So here we go. And I was notified that in, there was a little typo in our halo about the community garden planting. So if you followed through on that, May 21st, Sunday after worship is when we'll be actually planting our community garden. So plan on that as well, 1130 to 1 after church. We did that last year. We had a blast. 
Remember, we planted everything, all of the tomatoes and cucumbers and all of the other plants, as well as some, uh, what else did we put in? Marigolds and basil and some other things to help out. So we're going to be doing that again, and then we get to watch our garden grow. And we'll need some folks to help weed as it grows, as well as to harvest once it gets to peak. So plan on all of those fun things. We've got a lot happening here in the next few months, so we look forward to it. So friends, as we enter into our time of worship together this morning, remember that no matter who you are, where you have come from in the last week, or where you're headed in the week to come, for the next 50 minutes or so, you are home. Let us prepare our hearts and souls for worship together. Before I start, can everybody hear me? Okay. I checked a couple things before, since last week we had an issue. A little better? Those who are able, please rise and join me in the call to worship. God of all shepherds has called us here. We come today celebrating God's love for us. The good shepherd has given his life for us. We come today thanking Jesus for his witness and his teaching. The shepherding spirit moves through us, bringing us new hope. We come today ready to celebrate and to praise God.
You may be seated. Friends, inasmuch as God is our shepherd, let us not fear, but confess our sin that God may restore our souls. Let us pray together the prayer of confession. We grumble and complain about our daily lot in life. We read the newspapers, watch the broadcast news, and moan about the evil which flourishes in the world. And we wonder, where are you, O oh God? We turn our backs on the needs of the poor or give only a cursory acknowledge of their plight. We throw our hands up in the air and act as though we are defeated. And we cry, why isn't God taking care of all this? Forgive us, patient Lord. Forgive our arrogance, our ignorance, our pettiness. Forgive us when we could have done something to help someone else but chose instead to turn away. Forgive us when we, by our attitudes and language, our thoughts and actions, have gone against your will. You are with us, Lord. You lead us daily in right paths and offer to us the bread of life. You stand with us in times of trial and in the presence of those whom we fear giving us your abundant love. And then you offer us a place in your eternal home. How can we doubt your presence? Help us to trust you. Help us to praise you and remember that you have called us to be your witnesses and workers in the world. Give us strength and courage, joy and peace for all the work that you have for us to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, we pray. Amen. In the midst of all that you fear, God is with you. God will not abandon you. We know that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and offers us hope and peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Loving God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will strengthen us to be devoted to the teachings of your word, that through it we may hear your voice and follow it into eternal life. Amen. Our Psalter reading today is Psalm 23. Hear these words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our second reading today is from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Hear these words from Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Okay, we're going to try this again. Try and get me back out of the box. It's been quite a while. So, do you remember playing games when you were a kid where someone was required to be blindfolded. Remember playing those? Okay. What were some of the most popular ones? What were those games? Pin the tail and the donkey. What? Blind man's bluff. I remember the name of that, but I don't remember what that really was. Okay. A couple other ones. What, what are some other ones? I remember playing in the pool Marco Polo. Remember that? Uh huh. And I still hear people do that in stores. Marco! Right. When they're looking for, for one of their family members. Now you don't even need to do that. You just text on your phone or call. Where are you? But yes, I used to hear that in the store. Um, also, when I lived down south in Florida, it was pinatas. You know, breaking the pinatas. Pinatas are hard to break. And they give you a plastic bat to do it. Or if you want to just surprise somebody and make them put a blind. The yes, or if you want to surprise somebody. So when you used to play those games, did you enjoy them? I I hear I see some shaking heads no. Why not? You want to be in control. You want to be in control. The other thing was when you did the pin the tail on the donkey or the pinata thing, what'd they do to you? They put a blindfold on you, then what? Oh, they spun you around. The blindfold is bad enough, right? That's disorienting enough, and then they spin you around, and you're like, okay. So 
you're dizzy. Everyone laughs at you. You feel vulnerable, don't you? And everybody's laughing, so you're like, okay, now I really feel bad. And then, of course, somebody always cheats, right? Somebody always cheats. So everyone says that when you lose one sense, your others become stronger, or you at least focus on them more to help you know where you are, how to recognize things or people, etc., in the world around you. So when you would play those games, did you think about tapping into those other senses to help you? No. Marco Polo might have been the only one in the water, right? Or when you're in the store. Because you would have to kind of listen, unless you were a cheater. Or the people tried to confuse you when you were blindfolded. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. No, we wouldn't usually tap into those other senses because, you know, as a kid, one, you didn't think about it much. And most of the time, you were so focused on the fun and just wanting to win, right? So we didn't think much about using those other senses. When I was a child, very small, my maternal great-grandmother was extremely hard of hearing and had been all of her life. She was actually clinically deaf. And she wore a hearing aid at least all of her adult life. As a poor Irish immigrant, I doubt that they had access to hearing aids when she was a child. So at a very young age, I was taught to talk loudly, basically to shout if I wanted to be heard by her. That's why I tend to speak loudly normally, even today. And I do it without even realizing I'm doing it especially if I'm in a noisier place. And I also tend to do it because I realize I'm starting to lose some of my own hearing, especially in noisy or crowded situations. So I remember learning about and becoming aware of some of the different ways that we compensate for our sensory losses when I was about maybe 8 to 10 years old. Ever since that time, I've tried to focus on training my other senses, meaning building them up so that I am a more balanced person, um, at least most of the time. <laughs> Even with the addition of this training, I'm still prone to taking my senses for granted, just like we all do. Um, there are so much a part of us that we don't even think about until we start to have a deficit or we lose some of them altogether. So in my family, not just hearing is an issue, but vision is also an issue, obviously. So we tend to compensate for those things. Back during the fourth week of Lent, remember we heard this story about a man in John chapter 9, about a man um, born blind. Remember that story? And um, in Jesus' day, the man's life was very different than if a person today was born blind. Uh, his only option of survival back then was to beg for enough money or food to feed himself. So he lived on the edges of town. Even his own family would have had little contact with him. So he was considered one of the lost ones of society. So he really lived on the edges of society and town. And they, be <clears throat> excuse me. they believed that he or his parents must have done something very sinful, very wrong for him to have been born blind. That was the thought process back then. Well, we don't think that way today. We don't think that somebody's condition in the way that they're born is because of the way that somebody behaved. We don't feel that it is a punishment for our sinful or bad behaviors. We don't have that connection. In that story, Jesus heals this blind man without even being asked. He does so because he sees a man trapped by his own condition and sets him free. 
The Pharisees, of course, were upset once they discovered that this man was healed. Why? Remember? The Pharisees were upset for a couple of reasons. One was because they didn't know who Jesus was. So who's this odd dude that just wanders onto the scene and heals somebody? Two, he didn't have their permission to heal anybody. And three, he healed on the Sabbath. That's a major no-no. So right there, three strikes, he's out. The Pharisees were so suspicious of the man's healing that they even questioned whether the guy had actually truly been born blind. They'd known him all of his life, but yet they're still asking. Are you sure he'd been born blind? Mom, Dad, really? And they said, of course he was. You know him. But the Pharisees became irate when the former blind man didn't show them the proper respect when they interviewed him. And in fact, he was not very contrite at all. Remember, he actually challenged them. They felt that he mocked them. He even went so far as to ask if the reason that they were questioning him so much was because they really secretly wanted to be Jesus followers too. And they said, okay, that's it. You're done. And the real final straw was not only did he defend this Jesus character that they, nobody knew, but that he proclaimed him as the Messiah. So as a result, the Pharisees kicked him back out of town in the synagogue, which they had tentatively started to welcome him back into, but nope, that's it. He's back out. He's gone. Well, Jesus finds him once again and welcomes him into his group of followers. So this is where our story picks up today. All right, so that's what happened up to that point. And so all of that controversy is what is bubbling under the scene for today. They're in Jerusalem, and Jesus is still teaching. So there's all of this tension. And so the story begins, and this former blind man is part of Jesus' group, and I'm sure he's just relishing, and every day is this new delight. You know, can you imagine waking up every day and seeing something different? You're experiencing the world in a new way every day. You see something that you never saw before. A sound that you're used to, now you have something visual to connect to it. And maybe what sounds really big, like a, a song of a bird, you find out it's this tiny little bird. This big sound is a tiny little so he's relishing his newfound vision. Emotions are still really high between Jesus, his followers, and the Pharisees. But that doesn't stop him from entering Jerusalem regularly to teach and to visit the temple. Nothing like going into the lion's den, right? So today is no different, and Jesus is teaching once again. And he's telling the people, the shepherd enters through the gate, and the sheep hear his voice. And the shepherd calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. He goes ahead of them, and the sheep will follow him because they know his voice. When we combine this text with that of the good shepherd, with the well-known and beloved Psalm 23, we hear a more potent message, Jenna Smith tells us, this invitation towards generosity. Smith states that while the psalmist writes from the perspective of the sheep, Jesus takes up the shepherd's voice, and he says, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and will find pasture. Jesus' miraculous healing, too, is an act of generosity, she continues. It turns out God's goodness is big enough to heal the blind, to reveal itself on the Sabbath, to flow through the fingers of the Christ, to manifest itself beyond law and tradition and social mores, Smith observes. And then we add in Acts 2, we see this clear blueprint as to how the early church would understand and apply its ethos and witness to what it means to actually live in this Christ-centered, generous community. The members would sell all of their possessions to care 
for those in need. They break bread together. They practice a lifestyle of hospitality, teaching, and worship. Smith reminds us that through chapters 9 and 10 of John, one of the main theological questions is always, how do we know that this man, this Jesus, is from God? At the end of the day, Smith writes, Jesus answers it very simply. Trust my caring and generous acts. That's very He demonstrates this time and again in his ministry. And his first church follows suit as they live into a tradition of communal, generous shepherding. They'll follow him for they know his voice. So Acts 2 shows us what a generous community looks like in the first century. But what would that look like for us today? What does a generous community look like today? There isn't as much a communal living here as there was back then. Folks aren't willing to sell their possessions and sharing as much to ensure that everyone has enough as there was back then. But I wonder, would we be better off if we went back to a model more like the early church? Would we? I mean, think about it. We start out our lives living communally. And we end our lives often living communally in retirement and nursing facilities. Both times we live with others and rely on others to take care of our needs. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live more communally in the middle part of our lives as well? You're probably thinking, I'm not so sure about that. But what about this? Maybe we should be pooling resources And those who enjoy cooking and are good at it provide meals for those folks like me who really don't like cooking and aren't that great at it. I can cook well if I have to, but, you know. Um, Provide meals for folks in exchange for other things like gardening and results in the harvest or plumbing, house maintenance, helping to care for each other's children when the needs arise, etc., or a sharing of skills and abilities without the need for monetary exchange. Some of you may already be doing some of these things. Or maybe aspects of communal living can be even simpler. There is merit to pooling resources to buy and share things like lawnmowers and snowblowers, power tools and other pieces of maintenance equipment that we only use occasionally them in common and sharing them as needed. Isn't that why there are so many rental places out there or contracts? Um, Because we don't want to have to invest in our own power washers, extra tables and chairs, catering ware, post hole diggers, tractors, etc. when we can go and rent it or borrow it from friends. There's merit to communal living. Here at Hayshire, how is our communal life reflective of the generous and abundant life that Jesus intends for each of us? I know we do our best to stay connected to one another through phone calls, visits, and cards. Some even offer rides to others when they need them, bringing them to worship, doctor's appointments, social gatherings, special events, etc. Some cook meals and special treats for their friends and fellow congregants when they are sick and have surgery. We provide food and hygiene supplies Northeastern Food Pantry and the well each month. We help the Catholic Harvest Charity with baby and small children items. 
We help our homeless veterans friends at Mr. Sandy's Homeless Veterans Center. We help our small neighbors at Hayshire Elementary School. And whenever there is a need, Hayshire is willing to help out however we possibly can. We're members of the body of Christ. We are sheep of Jesus' flock. We know the shepherd's voice. We are willing to follow his lead. Smith uses the beautiful imagery of abundance in the First Nations version of the Gospel of John. I have come to give the good life, a life that overflows with beauty and harmony. Life in abundance, overflowing with beauty and harmony. Now that's a world that I want to live in. That world and life is possible if and when we all come together in and through Christ. First, we must see the vision in our minds. And then we must believe it's possible in our hearts. And then we need to live into it with our bodies and our lives. With the help of God, listening for Jesus' voice and following Jesus' way, all things are possible. Even lives filled with abundance, peace, beauty, harmony, and love. May it be so. Amen. This morning, let us bow our hearts and minds in prayer together. Shepherding God, in a dangerous world, let us hear your voice and come and go through your gate. We pray for the whole church that we may be devoted to your word into the universal fellowship, being generous to all who have need. We pray for the earth, for green pastures and still waters, that we may restore them to the goodness and purity that they had at the time that you created them. We pray for the people of the world their nations and leaders, that their wisdom and peace may govern all, so that no one will fear or be oppressed and suffer needlessly. We pray for all those in need, for those in want, those ill and those dying, that we may be the banquet that you set before them as we anoint them, feed them, Heal and comfort them in your name. We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. May no one live in fear. May all dwell in your loving presence. Blessed are you, great shepherd, who through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit give us goodness and mercy. Lead us down right paths and restore our souls. Together we lift our voices in deep and humble gratitude, saying the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our God is a generous God, and our lives overflow with the abundant gifts we have been blessed with. We give from this abundance so that others may come to live in and know God's generous love. Let us pray together. Holy, Holy One, one. Touch, touch us with the awe that came upon those early disciples as they beheld the signs and wonders performed in their midst by the apostles. May the gifts we offer this day be a remembrance of their commitment to share all things in common. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it's just about that time for us to depart from one another once again. But as we do, we receive this blessing. We ask that God give us the ears to hear and the eyes to see the gift of the shepherd before us. That, and give us the hearts to follow wherever God may lead. And we go with the blessing of the one who eternally creates us. The one who continually redeems us. <coughs> excuse me, and the one who always walks beside us. Amen.
Every week as we leave, we always pause that one last moment to remind ourselves that every time Jesus came into the presence, but especially every time he left those nearest and dearest, he gave them the gift of God's peace. So my friends, may the peace of Christ be with each of you. And also with you. Go in peace, have a blessed week, and I will see you soon. Take care, everybody. Careful out there in the rain today.